The State Library of New South Wales dates back to 1826. The majestic building you see today was knocked up in the early 1900s when the library grew an extra wing, the Mitchell. Today, this TARDIS of a building houses five million items and every one of them has a story to tell. Shh, I'm reading. T A double S. Here's a word for you. Tassiomancy, the art of reading tea leaves. Okay, it's not a precise science, but it has a certain mystique about it. And while the true believers use it to predict the future, there are tea leaves here in the State Library that unlock some amazing secrets from the past. Hidden deep inside this box is the last remaining link to the only woman to have escaped the convict colony of New South Wales. Have a look at them. They're just two dried out, wrinkly brown leaves. It's a bit nerve wracking sitting next to them because they're more than 220 years old. And if I just touch them, they disintegrate in my fingers. To a botanist, they're Smilax glycifolla, or sweet sarsaparilla. But to our early colonial ancestors, these leaves were the nearest thing they could find to a good cup of tea. They were once owned by one of Australia's greatest escape artists. Her name was Mary Bright, and she too was a tea leaf. Which of course is rhyming slang for thief. <laughs> In 1786, Mary was sentenced to seven years transportation to New South Wales for stealing jewellery. There, she married convict William Bryant. She was obviously a woman who could not be cooped up and she decided uh, to escape. Uh, it, was, it was she who was the mastermind behind this, not William. It was she who made friends with a visiting ship's captain so that she could acquire from him a quadrant and a sextant. It was she who seems to have organised the fact that they would leave on a moonless night. They then journeyed on this incredibly dangerous uh, journey in an open boat all the way to Timor. Travelling with Mary and William with their two kids and seven other convicts, they survived on stolen flour, pork and water. But curiously, they also carried a bunch of the native sarsaparilla leaves the convicts use for tea. 69 days and over 5,000 kilometres later, Mary, her family and the other convicts all arrived alive and well in Dutch Timor. This journey, to put it in some perspective, just two years before, William Bly had his famous uh, voyage in a longboat after the mutiny. In fact, Mary Bryant's trip was only marginally shorter than Bly's. And Bly said of Mary later that her journey was one of the greatest journeys ever undertaken in an open boat. When Mary and her party eventually arrived in Timor, they told the Dutch authorities they were survivors from a shipwreck off the Australian coast. And if they'd have stuck with drinking tea, they might have got away with it too. Unfortunately, one night, William goes out and he gets on the Terps and he starts bragging about their incredible adventure. The next thing you know, they're clapped in irons and they're on their way back to Britain to stand trial. And then things took a tragic turn. First, Mary's husband and her one-year-old son succumbed to disease. Five months later, Mary's daughter also died at sea. In England, Mary was thrown back into jail but there, her fortunes began to change. Well, she was a hero. I mean, Bly had received an extraordinary welcome, and now this woman uh, had come back uh, and doing a similar feat. Uh, she was known as the girl from Botany Bay. Mary's incredible story of survival reached a noted lawyer called James Boswell. He used his influence to secure a royal pardon for Mary, and from that point, she disappeared altogether. Except that she left one thing behind. Perhaps to thank James Boswell for his support, she gave him the only thing of value she had, her last few tea leaves from Botany Bay. Boswell must have slipped them inside one of his many books, and there they stayed for the next one and a half centuries. They turned up at Yale University in the USA amongst Boswell's personal papers. Yale gave two leaves to the State Library of New South Wales. 
160 years after these leaves left Australian shores, they had finally come home. Hello time travellers, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, history doesn't repeat, but it certainly echoes.